Welcome to Focus on Seniors, a television show sponsored by Helping Seniors of Brevard County, Florida. The show is designed to make you aware of senior issues, needs, and resources available to help us age in place and with dignity. This show will help you as you develop your own aging and care plan. Now, here is your host, Joe Steckler. I'm Joe Steckler, and welcome to Focus on Seniors, the television arm of Helping Seniors of Brevard County. <clears throat> Our show is designed to provide you with information on how to develop your own aging and care plan. Our topic today is dry eyes. And with me is Dr. Kerry Palmer, corneal specialist with the Eye Institute. And welcome, Dr. Palmer. Thank you very much for having me. I did a show with you on cataracts, and I, I, I thoroughly enjoyed what you said about cataracts. It's, uh, it's really causing me to, to make some uh, informed uh, decisions about what I'm going to do about my own cataracts. Uh, I find that uh, a lot of us, when we have medical problems, until we're confronted directly with an expert on uh, whatever the subject is, we tend to ignore it. And it's just like we can push behind us so often, so far, to where it gets pretty high, you can't crawl over it anymore, so you have to figure out what you're going to do. Um, but the subject that you are going to discuss today, uh, dry eyes, is something that I, um, I know a number of people that are uh, affected by that condition. I, I have never had that problem myself, but I understand it can be very painful. Um, it's a, a difficult thing to treat for many people. But um, what do we mean? by dry eyes. What are dry eyes? Um, basically, dry eye is a condition um, where there's insufficient tears on the surface of the eye. So, um, basically, I, I have a, a model here. Your training aid. We call them, in the military, we call them training aids. A training aid. Training aids. <laughs> so, um, this is basically an eye cut in half here, and here's the surface of the eye. Um, the surface here, the transparent area that covers basically the iris in your eye is called the cornea. And so the cornea is part of the surface of the eye, and then there's a membrane that covers the white part of the eye called the conjunctiva. So um, basically anything that affects the surface of the eye, um, uh, dry eye basic, basically is what we call it, um, uh, it can cause ocular surface disease. So, um, wait a minute, wait a minute. I understand when you when you don't have sufficient tear, but what was the other thing you said? Uh, poor quality of the tear film. So, oh, okay. Your tear film is actually consistent uh, consists of three different parts. Um, the outer surface of the tear film is an oil layer. So the oil actually keeps the tears from evaporating. So if, if the tears are insufficient in this oil layer, the tears evaporate quickly and will cause a dry eye. Um, the middle layer of the tear film is called the aqueous or the watery layer. Uh, it makes up the majority of the tear film and that's secreted by uh, different glands to keep the surface lubricated. And then there's an inner portion of the tear film called the mucin layer and the mucus just basically keeps the tears adherent to the surface of the eye. So um, if, if there's any issue with any of those three layers on the surface of the eye, that, that can lead to dry eye. So there's a number of different things that can cause this dry eye syndrome is what we call it. If, if a person has a dry eye uh, syndrome, would it feel, it, to me it would be like, Two sandpaper services rubbing together. Is that a, a, what, a, that might be a way to liken what it would feel like to somebody? There are quite a few different symptoms that patient can have with dry eye. Uh, very commonly, they, uh, they um, describe it as a sandy type sensation or a gritty sensation or a foreign body sensation. Um, some patients get a general irritation type of, of um, symptom. Uh, redness on the surface of the eye, uh, itchy, um, burning, um, 
And surprisingly, excessive tearing can be a symptom of dry eye, which sounds uh, ironic. Um, but our, our brain has a, a reflex mechanism. When it senses the surface of the eye is dry, it um, starts producing more tears. It causes a lacrimal gland to start producing more tears. So you can actually, a patient can actually be tearing quite a bit and still have dry eye because their own natural tears just aren't functioning properly. It's a poor quality tear film and um, it's not keeping the, the surface lubricated like it should be. Is the lubrication in my eye right now, is that like a tear? Yes, it's, a, it's the tear film on the surface of, of the eye. So um, our lacrimal gland is constantly producing a fluid that's secreted onto the surface of the eye to keep it lubricated, to keep um, it healthy on the surface of the eye. You don't necessarily feel tears like they're flowing down the cheek, um, but we all have tear films on the surface of the eye. Um, every time we blink, um, is, is uh, blinking actually acts kind of like a windshield wiper where it keeps the tear film smooth over the surface and helps keep the, the surface okay. lubricated. I want to ask you a question, and I want you to tell me if anybody's ever asked you this kind of question before. Okay, you're a woman, I'm a man. I don't wear makeup, I don't have anything around my eyes, I don't have any problem. You as a woman have all this stuff around your eyes and everything. Does that kind of makeup and stuff contribute to dry eyes or does it contribute to eye conditions? Uh, actually, makeup can contribute to eye, uh, dry eyes. Um, we actually have oil glands within our eyelids. Okay. And the oil glands... Um, secrete oil onto the surface of the eye. That's the oil tear film layer I was talking about. So um, sometimes eye makeup, it, they can clog up those oil glands and lead to further dryness. Because if the oil isn't on the surface, the tears evaporate and cause further drying. As you're talking, explaining us, I'm watching her eyelids go up and down. And I can <laughs> feel myself being... Focusing on your eyelids, <laughs> they're moving, and it, it's, it's hard not to do that when you talk about them. But what are some of the dangers of dry eyes? Are there dangers? Uh, there are uh, definite dangers. Um, when, one symptom also I didn't mention is actually blurry vision. So when we don't have a stable tear film on the surface, really we rely on a stable uh, tear film or a, a nice smooth tear film in order to see properly. And so when the tear film's not stable, we actually start getting blurry vision. And we may notice if we blink a few times, uh, the vision clears up, that's a good sign that the surface of the eyes are dry. So vision, uh, poor vision can be dangerous. Um, the other dangers when, um, when the eye gets extremely dry, besides causing pain, um, it can actually cause... Um, uh, surface disease on the surface of the eye called the cornea. Uh, when it gets extremely dry, the surface cells can slough off, cause a lot of pain. Um, even it can eventually cause scarring if it's not taken care of, which can be... It can actually score the cornea? It can possibly score the cornea if the dryness isn't under control. Mm -hmm. how, do you, how do you assess and how do you treat dry eyes? What do you do? Um... So dry eye, uh, we assess that at the, at the office. Um, first, we um, go over a thorough um, history of the patient and the symptoms, um, uh, see what the patient is experiencing. Um, definitely ask if the patient needs to use artificial tears during the day and how often they're using artificial tears. Um, assess the vision. Um, and then during the examination, there's different things I use. I use a special stain and watch the tears and see how quickly they evaporate. Um, I look at the surface of the cornea. Um, dry eye can cause tiny little erosions in the cornea, uh, which is a sign of dry eye. Um, assess how the lids are looking and, and see if there's any clogged oil glands in the eyelids. Um, uh, that's Pretty much just a general eye exam on the, sur the surface of the eyes is what, how we assess it. Um, there's different, a lot of different treatments for dry eyes. Um, 
if the patient uh, came in for the first time and it looks like they have mild dry eye, the first thing we try are just uh, uh, lubricating drops or artificial tears. Um, I definitely high re highly recommend preservative-free artificial tears. Um, there are a lot of over-the-counter eye drops. Um, I think the best are the preservative-free because if the patient are, uh, is placing a lot of preservative preservatives on the eye that can actually um, uh, can cause issues, burning, um, different things like that. So preservative-free, I would say, would be the best. Are there prescription medications that can treat dry eyes? Yes. Uh, very commonly, I will, I'll try the artificial tears first and check the patient uh, frequently. If the surface still appears dry, there are different uh, prescription eye drops we can use. Um, the biggest one would be Restasis, which is actually the most commonly uh, prescribed eye drop right now. Uh, Restasis is basically an anti-inflammatory type drop, and it uh, reduces surface inflammation on the surface of the eye, and it can also um, help the patient produce, um, uh, help the patient's own natural tears uh, work better and help it produ uh, them produce more um, better quality type uh, tears. Um, Restasis does take a little while to really start working. It's a twice a day drop, but it does work uh, very well for dry eye patients. So. Do you find dry eyes more prevalent in men or women, or is it about equally split? It's actually most, more common in women. Um, uh, it's been hypothesized that's due to um, hormonal type factors, especially around menopause, it, it's much more common um, the older we get to. So we, we tend not to um, produce as many tears as, as the gland um, ages. So as the eye gets older, it becomes more and more dry. So as a person gets older then, there will be less of a tendency for the uh, tear ducts to form the tears? Mm-hmm, yes. Would that because they lose some of their elasticity? That can be, a t well actually, that's another cause of dryness. The, eye, the eyelids lose elasticity, which is common with aging of, of the lids. That can cause more exposure to the eyes and more dryness too. The, um, the lacrimal gland, as it ages, the lacrimal gland is where uh, tear production takes place. Um, as that ages, it's, it produces less and less tears. So there's a few things. And while we're talking just a minute, so to go off the subject of dry eyes, but thinking about diseases of what, we were, what I would call the aging eye. Uh, we've talked about cataracts. Uh, we talked the importance of the tear duct. But how about other things that you're aware of as a corneal specialist that senior citizens might think about as they get older? Uh, besides the dry eye? Besides the dry eyes, yeah. A lot of things. Um, you know, gravity is always with us, so um, I have a lot of patients. I, I do actually some eyelid procedures too, so I have a lot of patients where... Um, the eyelids actually start coming down over the vision, which that in itself can actually be quite debilitating. And um, if the lids are coming down and starting to affect the vision, uh, we, if we prove to the insurance company with different tests that the lids are affecting the vision, they will cover for an eyelid procedure called a blepharoplasty, which is basically just removing some excess skin. And that can be real helpful to help with the vision, especially the, the vision uh, superiorly. Is that what when people are, say, called a drooping eye? Basically That's drooping eye, yeah. Basically a drooping eye. So, okay, what other things? It, 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 okay. I, I hate keep saying men and women, but are these are the things that happen, like drooping eye, is that something that... Does that, has, does that have to do with the, with the elasticity of the skin, or is that what it is? Pretty much, the elasticity of the skin. Um, 
just elasticity of the skin and also just gravity itself. Gravity is always pulling down on it. So um, it can pull down on the brows, pull down on the skin. We lose elasticity of the skin and everything, you know, starts to come over the vision. Okay. You know, I got you here and I'm always looking for something different that, <laughs> that seniors need to think about. What are some of the other things, Dr. Palmer, that a senior should think about as far as eye care? Getting their glasses adjusted uh, frequently, uh, being alert for cataracts, dry eyes, mm -hmm. drooping eye. But what are some of the other things that we don't generally think about that can be very important to seniors and, and repair their eyes? Um, well, definitely another huge aging issue with the eye would be macular degeneration, which actually is in, in the back part of the eye. Um, the macula is where we, um, where all the fine focusing of everything takes place. So if anything happens to the macula, that will really affect the vision. So there's different forms of macular degeneration. There's the dry form and the wet form. Um, really with the dry form, the best thing to do is just take eye vitamins. And that um, the eye vitamins, it's like a multivitamin and it has extra antioxidants within it. Uh, that helps prevent further aging changes in the back part of the eye. Also helps with the surface issues too, like dry eye. Um, supplements like uh, omega-3 fatty acids that are in fish oil and flaxseed oil help quite a bit with um, um, just regular eye health nutrition-wise. You say they're good for eye health? Yes. Mm -hmm. I have a brother-in-law is going to have a surgery for mac macular degeneration. And it's coming up soon. So that's, with the new techniques, things, are you saying that there's, there are things we can do to help correct macular degeneration now too? There are things that help try to prevent further damage to prevent the macula. Prevent further damage. Mm -hmm. And they do have, with the wet form of macular degeneration, there are injections that they're doing into the eye to help actually um, get rid of some of that swelling in the mouth, and that's shown to help quite a bit. The other thing I noticed, I had a question down here because your office had talked to me about uh, talking about, I specifically asked about other diseases causing a dry eye syndrome, and one of the things that came up was arthritis. Mm -hmm. And that's so. something that certainly... I mean, I, I feel that every day. I When I get up from after doing this show for me, my knees are going to hurt me terribly because until I get them worked out. <laughs> and that's arthritis. That's arthritis. So um, any inflammatory systemic disease um, that causes inflammation in the whole system, More, we're more talking about like the rheumatoid arthritis. That's like an autoimmune type um, disease. But... Anything that causes inflammation in the system and the joints, um, there's so many different diseases, lupus, um, inflammatory bowel syndrome, Crohn's disease, all these different inflammatory type diseases can also cause actually inflammation um, in the lacrimal gland that produces tears. And so um, a lot of these different medical conditions can actually cause um dry eyes. And you may have heard of Sjogren's syndrome that causes dry eyes, dry mouth. Those patients definitely suffer um, from pretty severe dry eyes most often. That's, that's a, 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 a whole new thing when you talk about uh, dry eyes. Uh, I, the focus of the show is on seniors, but you mentioned children. Is dry eyes something that's uh, common in children too? Dry eyes is fairly rare. In children, um, it can on occasion occur if um, it would be more likely if they had some other eye condition going okay. on that led to dryness. But um, in general, the tear film on ch in children is, is uh, fairly healthy. Okay. One of the things I asked you before the show, we're talking about medications and what you can uh, buy in a drugstore. Too many people... I, I, I can't put a number on it, but I, I suspect that a large number of people will self-diagnose. And when you start self-diagnosing with eye problems, 
uh, we treat the eye as a very simple piece of machinery in our body, uh -huh. but it's extremely complicated when you really think about it. Uh -huh. um, there is always a danger of using over-the-counter medications that could cause more of a problem than they are of a help. Uh -huh. how, uh, how would you advise people to proceed when they have what what could what what would I look for? How would I know if I was experiencing dry eye syndrome? Well, there's definitely the symptoms I talked about. So um, I understand those. Mm -hmm. If you're saying you're not having symptoms, how would you know? You I don't really think I am because it's, when I, when I blink my eyes, it doesn't hurt at all. Okay. Uh, basically, it would require a uh, really an exam in the office to determine whether or not you're suffering from dry eyes. Uh, one thing, a lot of patients uh, don't feel it, but they say they have blurry vision that clears up when I blink several times. So that's a real good um, hint that the patient is probably suffering from dry or the dry the tears just aren't stable on the surface. Um, but if you feel you were saying before that you know, you have cataracts, and cataracts generally cause um, just uh, constant uh, blurriness or cloudiness of vision. Uh, dry eyes is, is usually um, intermittent uh, blurriness of vision that um, often improves when blinking a few times. So um, that's one thing that may hint at dry eyes. But either way, any eye symptoms, or if you just want to have your eyes looked at, I would definitely see an ophthalmologist or an optometrist first just to see if that's what's going on before going ahead and just putting any eye drop in the eye. Most people will think of the two words you just said, optometrist and an ophthalmologist. You're not an optometrist. Correct, I'm an ophthalmologist. You're an ophthalmologist. Yes. And you deal with the diseases of the eye. Yes, uh, the main difference between the two, um, Optometrists um, go to optometry school, which is four years. Ophthalmologists are, are medical doctors, and they also perform surgeries. So I, I would say the main difference is typically ophthalmologists are eye doctors that perform surgery, or they're eye surgeons. Optometrists are more uh, general, just eye doctors that do not perform surgery. But if you... If you went to an eye doctor, just a just person off the street, they look in the phone book and they think they got an eye problem, would they generally pick an optometrist or an ophthalmologist? What do you think they would pick? Uh, probably depends on the patient and who, who takes their insurance, I would guess. <laughs> but okay. um, we're, uh, we both diagnose eye diseases. We both, um, in the state of Florida, can treat with eye drops. Um, I would say if there's a certain issue going on, there are uh, different subspecialties within ophthalmology. Like, for instance, I'm a corneal specialist. I deal with the surface of the eye. There is glaucoma specialists, retinal specialists, pediatric specialists, plastic specialists. Within just one little organ, there's a lot, a lot of different subspecialties. And I would say, you know, if you know that you have a particular problem, you may want to go find an actual um, specialist within okay. that area. You just, you just, okay. Let's talk about the Eye Institute just for a minute. Okay. You remember the Eye Institute. You're a corneal specialist. Yes. You do cataracts, you treat dry eyes, you can do all that. You have an optometrist there? We have two optometrists. What other eye specialties would you have within the eye institute? What is Dr. Michael Mandesi? What is he? I know what he is, but what does he do? I'm not um, his specialty, he's fellowship trained in neuro-ophthalmology. So he deals a lot with um, issues with the optic nerve, which is in the back part of the eye. Um, and there are nerves that innervate the eye muscles that help the eye move in different directions. And um, so any patient, say if a patient has double vision and their eye muscles aren't moving together, he would be the specialist we pick for the patient to go see for the double vision. And he was on the show and he had his big eyeballer. And if I remember correctly, 
if those two nerves aren't moving the same, there's things they can do to make them move the same. There are. There, um, well, there are surgeries that can be done the, um, to change the position of where the eye muscles are to help make the eyes balance. So if one eye was turning in or out like that, um, you would want to tighten this eye muscle, loosen that eye muscle so that the two eyes are, are balanced. So the Eye Institute, in speaking, is just like um, we're filming this show at Health South Sea Pines, and they're a total rehabilitation hospital. At the Eye Institute, you bring sort of what the same forces to bear. You have, is there any area of the eye that you would not treat at the Eye Institute? Think about that. Uh, typically not. In general, we don't see many pediatric patients. There is a pediatric specialist in the area, um, Dr. Tether. We re refer a lot of pediatric patients to, but uh, for the most part, we we are able to see any type But of generally disease. speaking, if a person goes into the Eye Institute and has a problem, you have the different disciplines there that can, can help them find their way to the right doctor. I would say so, yes. Yeah. Well, that's important, Dr. Palmer, because mm -hmm. um, doctors hang their, I'm not demeaning doctors, but doctors hang their shingle out and they they can do they can do this much, but if you have to get over in this area, or this area, you have to send them to another specialist. Mm -hmm. At the Eye Institute, you can do it all there under one roof, ah, which makes great. a difference. It's great for the patients, great for the doctors there too. Down the hallway, we might have another specialist who can take a look if there's some issue going on with your patient. Yeah. so it's nice. And I have found with all my medical problems that if I have a team approach mm -hmm. to help look at my problems, I'm much better off. I'm very, very pleased with my medical team. I have a cardiologist, a doctor of internal medicine, a chiropractor, and some other people that do a good job of looking at me. Mm -hmm. We're almost out of time. What would you tell people? Any advice you give them about dry eyes? <laughs> Quickly. Okay. Uh, if you're thinking you're suffering from dry eye, I would definitely recommend uh, a full exam with an eye doctor <laughs> just to see if that's actually what's going on because it could be something else. Okay. And you can always call Dr. Palmer to the Eye Institute too. Yes. <laughs> but thank you, Dr. Palmer. And I want to thank you, viewer, for watching today's episode of Focus on Seniors. If you have questions or comments, please call us at 321-473-7770. For more information on senior care and resources, visit our website at helpingseniorsofbrevard.com. Be sure to listen to Focus on Seniors on radio station 1300 AM WMEL every Thursday morning at 9 AM and look for us in your Fly Today newspaper health section every Thursday for our Focus on Seniors column. I'm Joe Steckler and thank you for joining us today for Focus on Seniors and thank you, Dr. Paul.